All right, so here's what Venus looks like it, it, as we kind of look around its surface features on the globe. Uh, the colors on this map are such that blue and green are low ele elevations, and then yellow, orange, and red are higher elevations. And when we just kind of cruise around and look at Venus's surface, we see that it has two big continents and a bunch of kind of smaller landforms at high elevations, other little patches of red and orange. So these two main continents are made. Um, this one is called Aphrodite Terra, and it kind of wraps around most of the planet's equator region. So this is the biggest continent. And I think this uh, feature on Aphrodite Terra is really interesting, these long cracks and fissures on the surface. Um, and then the other continent is up here near the polar region, and this is called Ishtar. Um, both of the continents are called Terra, so Ishtar Terra and Aphrodite Terra, and those are so, so named, you know, as continents um, in comparison to these smaller landforms, which are called regios. And so these small regios are kind of, you know, dotted all over the surface, uh, kind of randomly. And, you know, looking at Venus, the continents don't look very similar to the continents on Earth. Um, for one thing, Aphrodite Terra is a, is a vastly huge continent, much larger than what we see on Earth. And then Earth doesn't have all those like small little continents just kind of scattered about. It has fewer number of large continents. So this is the, a big difference that we see looking at Venus and Earth. And you know, only 30% of its surface about is, um, is highlands, these continents, and the rest of this green and blue is low-lying basins. Uh, we mostly see those lowland basins, the main continents, Aphrodite and Ishtar, and along these continents the, uh, are mountains, and the mountains tend to be, uh, you know, not very weathered compared to the mountains on Earth, uh, because for one thing, Venus doesn't have any water to weather those mountains by erosion processes, and also its winds are very gentle, and it seems like, uh, for whatever reason, the amount of sediment, like soil material on the surface of Venus is uh, not very high when we compare it to the amount of sediment on Earth or even on Mars or um, the moon. Uh, we know that um, Venus has some tectonic activity uh, in its past. So um, tectonic activity is not just plate tectonics, but it, it, it is any activity that reshapes the crust. And so any sort of tectonic activity like volcanism or the formation of, of cracks, ridges, and rifts. All of this implies that Venus's mantle has at least some convection. All right, um, but it, uh, okay, I won't get there yet. So the pancake volcanoes are probably one of the strangest features that we see on the surface of Venus. These do not look like volcanoes on Earth, right? These are uh, short and really broad. Um, and the big difference between the volcanoes on Venus and the volcanoes on Earth is that on Earth, uh, the plates are moving above hot spots. And so, for example, you get a, a hot spot that pokes through different locations on Earth's crust. Um, so like forming, forming the Hawaiian uh, island chain, for example. But here on Venus, the volcano just sits at one spot. That hot spot doesn't deviate. And so it just slowly blobs, you know, lava up into the surface. And it just kind of over time results in this kind of big overflow region of lava in this pancake shape. Uh, the coronae are similar. So that's what's here on this lower left corner. Um, and this is just a kind of bulged region where the lava has not actually, you know, come through the surface, but it's put stresses on the surface that result in these circular cracks. Um, and so this is basically just a failed pancake volcano, I guess. Um, it's just where a hot spot has been, you know, filling the surface up, but none of it has actually poured through. Okay, they're called coronae because corona means something like crown or circle. And so it's named after those circular cracks. Uh, there's also a feature on the sun called the solar corona. It's that's that same thing, just the, you know, halo of a uh, very light and you know energized gas around the sun that we see during eclipses. Okay, the other piece of tectonic activity we see on Venus is the formation of cracks, ridges, and rifts. So does Venus have plate tectonics? It has all this tectonic activity, but does it have crustal plates 
that are uh, you know, floating around on mantle convection cells. To answer that question, I wanna look at a couple of maps and first look at Earth's surface. So when we look at the topography of Earth, we can see that you know, along the edges of the continents, there's a fairly sharp divide uh, between tall features, tall mountainous features and low lying uh, ocean basins. And this is true on the edges of all the continents. And we also see some really apparent um, plate boundary lines, for example, here in the mid-Atlantic where we've got a mid-ocean ridge, right? So this, uh, this mid-ocean ridge is one of the, I think to me, the most obvious um, example of a, of a plate boundary uh, that you, you could really argue must be from some spreading. But when we look at similar topographies um, for Venus, we don't see the same thing. This is a vintage topography map. Um, but when you look at newer ones, you, you just don't see uh, any sort of mid-ocean ridges. You just see these little bits of regio and then the two large continents. And so I think it's you know maybe a little bit more telling to look at the distribution of volcanoes instead because the topography is not necessarily the best clue. And when I look at the map of volcanoes, I've showed you this one before, um, they follow plate boundaries quite closely for the most part, except for the hotspot volcanoes like Hawaii. And on Venus, um, let's see, the, the red triangles are large shield volcanoes and the yellow dots are smaller volcanoes. Um, all of these other symbols are other volcanic activity and it's just distributed everywhere pretty evenly. So it doesn't follow plate boundaries. And our conclusion is that Venus does not have tectonic plates. And so it doesn't have the type of crust recycling that Earth does where, you know, subducting plates can pull rock into the mantle and, you know, lock away that rock. And this is another influence on climate because the carbon that does get locked within rocks on Venus um, doesn't have anywhere to go. It just stays on the surface. Whereas on Earth, some of that rock actually goes back into the mantle area.